The industry wanted dead or alive new artists to sell their souls in the way they survive. D told Puffy, say, yo, if you like the loss, you're going to love X. Mm. And I spit or whatever, and he was like, ah, um, his voice is too rough, he's not marketable. But I also understand Puff's perspective, because I know what it's like to have my man. Puff called that Drake. Puff on Drake. I understand that. I call that 50. There has been negative propaganda put out about me that's not true. Jamie Foxx appears to have posted his first statement on social media more than three weeks after suffering an undisclosed medical emergency. Appreciate all the loves. Feeling blessed? The message reads, Foxx's post came hours after a new report from TMZ on Wednesday claimed the beloved actor is still hospitalized as his loved ones ask for prayers. Since falling, a lot has been floated as a possible cause of his undisclosed ailment, with some eagle-eyed fans now linking what rapper DMX might have said to Jamie's troubles. So, what did DMX say before he died, and how is it connected to Jamie Foxx's current situation. Stick around to find out. Listening to a DMX song from the late 90s is like riding a wrecking ball through a gated community. The music video for Stop Being Greedy, one of many confrontational highlights from the rapper's 1998 Def Jam debut, It's Dark and Hell is Hot, shows DMX hunting a wealthy white man across a mansion before eventually feeding the poor soul like a T-bone steak to his pet pit bull. The rapper's exhilarating, half barked vocals gave the sense that he wanted to eat the rich. He always had the ballsy audacity to call and say things as they are, and that might have led to his death. Thousands of Jamie Foxx fans now have a reason to believe that part of what DMX fought for while alive is what Foxx tried doing before finding himself trapped in a hospital bed. When DMX was fighting for his life, one of the first people to wish him a quick recovery was Jamie Foxx. God, we need a huge favor. Heal his body, give us one more chance, Jamie Foxx wrote in an emotional Instagram post. Now X is not here to return the favor, but what he said may help save Jamie's life. The rapper, born Earl Simmons, died of a heart attack in White Plains Hospital in April 2021. But not before showing the world what a horrible human being Diddy is and how he mistreated Biggie Smalls in his final days. If you've been following Fox's situation, then you must be aware that Diddy's name has been mentioned a lot. Throughout his over two decade long career, DMX struggled with legal issues, tabloid coverage, and drug addiction. He was one of the most well-known hardcore rappers to ever achieve mainstream success, and he was an incredible artist whose style of emotional urgency and cultural effect reached far beyond his core fan base. After hearing the tragic confession that the hypnotized hitmaker shared with him, X discussed his encounter with Biggie in one of his earlier interviews. X said that Diddy had something to do with Biggie's death, insisting that he is a dangerous man and that those close to him end up dead. Well, Fox has been close to Diddy. Do you see what I say? Around the middle of the 90s, hip-hop started to be widely marketed around the world. DMX's contribution contrasted the polished, big-budget sound of contemporary rap with a more realistic, street-level vibe. Moreover, he established himself as an engaging movie star in films like Belly, Romeo Must Die, and Exit Wounds. He also unwittingly acted as a guide to commercial success for Jay-Z. However, DMX is currently most well-known for his captivating music, which paired his robust machismo with an emotional authenticity that won over audiences everywhere. Apparently, Biggie told DMX about the time Puff Daddy sexually assaulted him. Jamie Foxx has been vocal about Diddy's wild parties that date back to the 90s. Back in an interview before Undisputed was released in 2012, the rapper reflected on his time as an unsigned artist, explaining how he came close to signing with Bad Boy but was ultimately passed over in favor of the locks. It's no secret that the locks was signed before I was. DMX said that they were the safer option. Puff signed them, and it was both a boon and a bane. They were overjoyed to get signed and appear on the Benjamins, but then Diddy made them jiggy and put them in suits and make them write lyrics for him and take their publishing and rape them. DMX went on to say that Damien D. Rock Butler set up their meeting, but that Diddy ultimately decided not to sign him because he didn't consider DMX to be a commercially viable artist. It was quite obvious that Diddy had a fondness for guys, but it turns out that many haters now believe that Diddy passed up X because he didn't find him gorgeous enough to satisfy his sexual appetite. The thing I respect about Puff was that he told me to my face, he said, his voice is too rough, he's not marketable. You got to respect that. In the same interview, DMX spoke about his respect for Biggie and how Biggie taught him to appreciate a smile. During their discussion, Biggie allegedly told Diddy that he had been sexually molested by the latter. Too many eyewitnesses to the alleged mistreatment by Diddy of one of 
his best artists ever have come forward to cast doubt on the veracity of the claims. Rapper and ex-member of Bad Boy Sean Diddy Combs is openly criticized by Mace in a new song titled Oracle 2, standing on bodies for his callous treatment of Biggie Smalls before and after the rapper's murder. Mace raps over a mid-tempo beat powered by horns at 808 seconds and attacks Diddy's character, highlighting his purported financial operations and what is seen as a lack of support for musicians formerly linked with the Bad Boy label. I'm the ghost of Shine. I speak for every artist never spoke their mind, representing every artist that was left behind. From Craig Mack to G. Depp, I still remember them kids trampled. For every producer you ever stole their sample, he rhymes about the 1991 City College tragedy, where nine people were killed at a celebrity basketball game hosted by Diddy. In the new song, Mace claims that Diddy exploited the late Biggie's children, clearly showing the dangerous man Fox used to hang around. I'm not hating on your Billy Worth. Right now, I'm only saying what you really work. You ain't no architect. You just a nigga who know how to market death. He raps. Biggie was shot and killed in a drive-by in Los Angeles on March 9, 1997, at the height of his career as a rapper. The release of his album Life After Demise was delayed because of his untimely demise. His public feud with Mace, a longtime friend and label partner, dates back to at least 2020. Mace then took to Instagram to accuse Diddy of using questionable and very unfair business practices. It was after Diddy's inspiring speech at Clive Davis's pre-Grammy dinner where he declared that he was now for the artist, that the allegations began to surface. Mace continued on the actual audio tape, saying that even though Diddy had ruined his name, he had to put on a smile and continue performing for the sake of his fans. DMX's comments about Diddy's treatment of Biggie are relevant here. He would verbally and physically assault you behind closed doors while demanding a smile on your face in public. For example, you still got my publishing from 24 years ago in which you gave me $20,000, which makes me never want to work with you as any artist wouldn't after you know someone is robbing you and tarnishing your name when you don't want to comply with his horrendous business model. Mace lamented. In 2021, Diddy published an open letter decrying corporate America for underfunding black media, reviving old claims that he exploits his musicians. Worse, Biggie is said to have been subjected to rumors that Bad Boy's creator demanded sexual favors from all of the record label's employees. R&B singer Q Parker quickly condemned the Bad Boy CEO after being called out by Mace. Q Parker claimed he, like Mace, was attempting to violate the terms of his contract. If you're gonna be the face of this black excellence, there are some actions that I'm gonna challenge you to make. It's a lot of things out here that you can make right with a lot of people who contributed to your wealth, he said at the time. 50 Cent has joined the ranks of prominent figures who have publicly accused Diddy of sexually and financially abusing his musicians. How we wish Fox listened to him. Uncle Fifth was deeply hurt by the way Biggie, a man he respects, was treated. Not only has 50 Cent accuses Diddy of sexually and financially abusing his musicians, but so have DMX and Mace, two other prominent figures in the industry. When discussing Mace-related matters, 50 Cent has claimed that Diddy's $2 million demand prevented Mace from leaving his bad boy contract and joining G-Unit Records in 2005. 50 people have a $1 million spending cap. After Mace cut into an interview that Diddy was doing with Atlanta's B-103 in 2009, the rapper was released from his contract for a year. When Mace handed Diddy his contract, he inked it in front of the cameras. After leaving the label for good in 2012, he is once again using public pressure to try to get his work published. I offered you $2 million in cash just a few days ago to sell me back my publishing, he said on Instagram. Your response was if I can match what the European guy offer him, that would be the only way I can get it back. The rapper said, it's not just Mace who has second thoughts about his time at Bad Boy. The rapper Biggie was too young to realize that Diddy was using and manipulating him, according to his mother. In 1999, the Locks trio Jadakiss, Styles P, and Sheik Loud started the Free the Locks movement to break free from their contract with Bad Boy. The group felt that glossy pictures with plenty of showy clothing weren't representative of their brand, and that Diddy wanted tracks that would do well on the bill Board top 40. They preferred to join the more rigorous Rough Riders label, which is based in DMX's hometown of Yonkers. Diddy released them from their contract, but he still had some control over them because he published half of their song. The person in charge of an artist's publication receives royalties if the artist's work is used in a commercial context, such as a movie, TV show, video game, or other product. Styles claimed to Diddy in 2005, during their heated argument on New York's Hot 97, we only ever recorded money power and respect with you. Your ownership of 50% of our publishing company has not changed in the past decade. There's no good reason to provide you with 50% of our magazine. You had a number of performers whose careers never went right with you. 
he further charged. So, it seems DMX's accusation about Diddy didn't stem from nothing, and since his death, he is dearly being missed by his friends and family. At the time of his death, many of his friends and peers paid tribute to the fallen legend, including Wyclef Jean, Eve, Missy Elliott, and Swizz Beats. During the rapper's memorial service at Brooklyn's Barclays Center in 2021, Swizz Beats said he wished people had shown DMX more support while he was alive. Words can't describe our loss, but our gain is heavy as well because we got a real serious person upstairs that's looking down on us, and that's going to guide us through our journey, he said. I just wish all these people showed up for him when he was here. You got thousands of people claiming who they are in tickets and things like that. He continued, this man needed everybody. He didn't need everybody when he was not here. He needed everybody when he was here. We have to learn to celebrate with each other while we're here. I don't want y'all to show up to my shit when I'm gone unless you were showing up while I was here. If you happen to be a fan of Jamie Foxx, then don't let him get to the level X got. So, to sum it up, there's no getting around the fact that Diddy is a sexual and financial predator. Artists can't all be making up these stories, right? If only Jamie Foxx could have stayed away from him, he could be winding up the shoot of his movie right now. And that's it from us today. Until next time, thank you for watching.